Welcome to the demo of Day2IQ's Dispatch CICD platform. Before we get started in the demo, I want to show a brief overview of what the architecture looks like and the process that developers and operations people will use. So Dispatch is a part of the modern software development practice known as a combination of continuous integration, CI, and continuous delivery or deployment, which is CD. It is declarative in nature, so think no scripting, and based on GitOps, so heavily focused around using Git, which developers already know. The continuous integration portion allows a developer to integrate incremental changes to a shared repository continuously. Every commit and merge that this developer makes in the developer repository will initiate tests, which if successful, may generate a pull request for operational review. The continuous delivery side allows operations, maybe in your organization, there will be a single DevOps role, but in a larger organization, it may be that developers and operations are separate roles. This supports both of those workflows. The operations side deploys the latest versions to a production environment or a QA environment, depending on the life cycle of the software, continuously shortening the software release cycle. It allows for automated releases and even automated canary deployments, which will roll back if the deployment is not successful to the previously working version. It allows for continuous delivery versus continuous deployment and takes the manual steps out of the process. I mentioned that the deployment and the specification of the entire life cycle that we're talking about in both the CI and CD side is entirely declarative, fitting the Kubernetes model. We'll show that in the form of the dispatch file, which goes into the coders repository and the application YAML templates that go into the operations side. Briefly, what it looks like is a developer will open a pull request or will simply make a commit, which automatically launches tests based on the dispatch file specified in that repository. And once tests are successful, we'll deliver into the operational repository. Again, these might be the same role, they might be the same repository. But in the operations side, there will be the YAMLs that are required to deploy to Kubernetes. And once that operations person approves the pull request and merges it, then the build and deploy to the production environment will automatically happen. So let's see what this really looks like in practice. So let's start with a convoy cluster. I have a small cluster up on AWS here. So we notice that Convoy provides a tab when we have dispatch enabled, which will show us the UIs for the components that we are going to be using, uh, namely Tecton and Argo CD. So at this point, I have no repositories defined for dispatch. Uh, that's done either through the UI or through the CLI. And I will show you what we're working with though. From the developer perspective, so this would be the CI side, I have a repository that includes what we might consider to be three applications that are interleaved. There is a photos application, which will read from Cassandra and place photos onto a queue. We have a mapping application that provides a user interface that will be publicly accessible, displaying the images that were collected from Flickr. Using the Flickr API to collect photos that match a given tag or set of tags, uh, geolocated so that they can be displayed on the map. Also in the coders repository, we have a dispatch file 
Remember, the dispatch file can be in one of four configuration languages, JSON, YAML, Q, which is this file, which is a subset of JSON, or Starlark, which is actually a subset of Python. Tasks such as build and push and a pull request for operations will happen on certain events. For instance, any commit or a particular type of push or even uh, a chat ops type of operation. We'll sh come back to this file and uh, go into greater detail once we actually have the demo moving. Then I mentioned there might be a separation of concerns in your organization between the development side and the operational side. That's what I'm showing here with a kind of a mirror Git repository for the GitOps folks. In this repository, instead of code, we'll find a Kubernetes resource manifest template. So this will describe our application as it's deployed in production. And this may be comprised of many uh, YAML documents, of course. There might be a deployment, there might be services defined, there might be secrets, etc. So let's go back to dispatch. The documentation that you'll see from this site will show you what needs to be done to get started, to create a repository, to create pipeline configurations using those dispatch files. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run some commands from the CLI to get all that started. What we see that here are the commands required to show dispatch for this application, what Docker Hub or repository, other repository we're using for our builds and images and how we log in to GitHub and Docker. So we're going to add, this will automatically add credentials including secrets and config maps to our cluster where we run our CICD processes. I'm going to now go ahead and do the GitOps side of defining the applications that we're going to be using for deployment to our Kubernetes production cluster. While that's going, we'll see it's actually creating webhooks on our repositories, which you can see by going to settings and then webhooks. And these will be invoked on certain actions as defined in our dispatch files uh, and communicate with the cluster through the service account that we have defined. Now, when we're actually within dispatch with the UI, we can go to the components that are uh, required. So. We can go to Argo CD and see the applications that I have already defined. This is uh, part of our GitOps command from the CLI. Uh, for instance, we look at any of them, we'll see there's nothing going on right now because we haven't actually deployed an application to the production cluster. Uh, the other side is Tekton, which is the CI side. Once our developers start pushing commits, we'll see the pipelines runs created that is defined in the dispatch file that will automatically run the tests, do the builds, and create pull requests for operations. So actually, let's get that going right now. What I'm going to do is simply go in and change a file for each of these applications just to make a change that I can push. So there's Flickr. Let's go to map. And let's go to photos. And see what we have as changes. 
So I have my unstaged changes. I'm going to stage those and commit. And when once I push those, let's make sure that happens. We can go back here, and at some point, the webhook that's on the coders repository will notify the uh, cluster and start a pipeline running. And we see our pipeline run has started. So let's take a look at that. There are multiple sections to it. So there's, there, these are related to the tasks defined in the dispatch file. So a test for photos, build for map, build for Flickr, et cetera. As it running, we can monitor within Tekton the steps required. So part of the, part of the build and push a process for this app are running Docker build with a Docker file that's in the coders repository. And as that's going, because this process uh, takes a while, there's uh, numerous tests happening and so forth, uh, we can actually have a look at the dispatch file in the coders repository. The Git repository itself is defined as a resource. Uh, each app has some sort of an image related to it. So that's a, resor a resource called a Docker image. Then there is one or more tasks defined. A task here is called test photos, and these are the steps required. So within that image that was specified, we're going to run a specific uh, test program in a specific working directory. Tasks may have dependencies on other tasks. For instance, a build task might have a dependency on a preceding test task. You'll notice in the task called deploy app name that there will be steps that include putting uh, an update out to the Git Ops repo. So once again, if everything succeeds, a pull request will be generated at the end of it. Let's see if that's happened in any of these yet. So there's a deploy photos, and it indicates that, it, that a pull request was indeed created for this app. So once we see everything has successfully completed, we can go back, go to our Git Ops repository, and we see that sure enough, we have three pull requests. So operations can go through each of these pull requests. Uh, if there's a review process, they just follow those as normal. Uh, I'm gonna simply select these and merge them and delete the branches that were created you'll see a kind of a hashtag branch created. So I'm gonna go ahead and confirm the merge and then delete the branch. And uh, immediately then on Argo CD, if we go back and look at our applications, we'll see that one of these, the one that we triggered is now in progress. So this is actually getting deployed out and the resources that we see here are actually resources within Kubernetes. So the actual deployments, and this is related to the man resource manifest templates that you saw in the GitOps repository. Uh, they're filled in though with specific, specific tags for this version of the application that's being built. Okay, and we've already got a pod running. Let's do that for the other two applications. And then when we go back to Argo CD, to our applications, we'll see that they are all either in progress or already synced. In this case, we've got synchronization in progress because these builds uh, are just happening. And you notice that uh, although we didn't have a previous application deployed for the map, 
but nonetheless, there's a canary defined. So for the map application, since this is our user facing application, which presents a web UI to our users, we have a canary deployment defined, which will become more interesting once we get to a second revision of this app uh, in a moment. So let's take a look at this version one of our map application and see how it's coming along. As I mentioned, our three-part application has been combing the Flickr API looking for images that match a particular tag. In this case, I was looking for photos of festivals that people have taken. So let's see what that looks like when we drill in. There's a photo of a festival or tagged as festival in Puerto Rico. You can look at other parts of the world. We might be able to make an interesting improvement to, to the performance of this application. And we might as well give it a try uh, because that's part of this demo. So to do that, I'm going to make a bit of a code change. I have already made the change to, uh, to the code and I'm going to go ahead and commit that. and push it to my repository. Now, once again, I'm going to go through the whole process uh, that happens when the developer checks in code and there will be a new testing and build pipeline and a new pull request created and so forth. So we'll come back when all that is done. And this pipeline has finished. Let's take a look at it. Uh, as before, it went through all the steps, but this time for only one of the three applications. And it does say that it has created a pull request. So we're going to expect to see that on the operations repository. And sure enough, there's a new pull request for that, what will become the new version of our application. I'm going to go ahead and just confirm that merge, delete the uh, created branch, and then go straight into Argo CD because we're going to be able to see the whole process of this deploying. So we see that some users are going to see the uh, pods that are serving the older version and some are going to be seeing the new version, which is called the Canary. So I see I'm getting exactly the same version that I got before, and that's to be expected because the majority of the users are going to be seeing the old version but I'm going to have to hit refresh quite a few times before I see the new one. And when I do, we'll, uh, we'll have a look. And look at that. It looks like one, I'm one of the lucky users that gets to see the new interface that is quite a bit more interactive and quick to run than the older version. So the canary will work in such a way that as users start having successful experiences and don't get 404s or don't get criteria that are specified in the uh, as bad things in the uh, canary deployment, then the older version will start to be rolled out uh, on an ongoing basis without disruption to my user base, uh, and eventually everyone will be seeing the new version. So in a very short time, we've seen how things can be built around Git so that the developer can continually improve the code and then either on an ongoing basis or on a periodic basis, 
operations can go and approve that and decide exactly how and when things will be deployed. Less on a release basis as was done in the, in the past and more on a continuous basis where things can just continually be improving in a cloud native fashion. We'll have additional sessions that go much more deeply into exactly how these things are specified and how they run and how different environments might uh, actually not only work within a Kubernetes environment, but also integrate with Jenkins and other traditional tool sets uh, used in CICD. That's the demo. Thank you for your attention.